Good morning. It's been close to 20 hours since we were last together. Yesterday, what we did was we separated the mother into two. Half of the mother I fed and put it back in the fridge. The second half I fed as well and it's making into 11. So this is now the 11. You can see it's risen quite a bit that we left yesterday. This leaven now is going to raise the bread for today. Today is our bread making day. So now I'm going to add 335 grams of flour. I've already measured it out just to take up time. Add the 300, 335 grams of just bread flour. And now I'm gonna take my trusty bowl scraper and mix it. So I'm just gonna gradually mix in the flour by turning it and folding it. So you can see it's starting to form. It's a very soft dough, which is really what you want. You wanna to try to avoid adding more flour. Bread making is about the very precise relationship of the components. 50-50 bread or flour and water. If you add more flour, because it's, you think that it needs to be drier, you will find that the bread is not as moist and not as, it won't rise as much. You do want it to be relatively moist. And I'm gonna keep adding moisture to the bread as I go through. So, oops, right now, I'm just gonna get my hands in it now. Mix up all the flours into it until it forms into a dough. You can come and have a look and see it's beautiful soft dough pretty not very elastic at this at this stage definitely not a shiny sheen which we will get in about 30 45 minutes so i'm now just going to remove the flour off using i can just do this the other thing you can do to get this the wet dough off is using flour but remember i don't want to put any more flour into my dough as little as i can so i'm going to cover it leave it for 30 minutes and I'll see you when we get back. All right, I added the last bit of flour to the pre-ferment 30 minutes ago, and now we're going to do the part where we do basically the um, kneading. But I didn't add the salt, and there's a reason why I didn't add the salt before, because salt retards the action of the microbes in the, in the mother. So I, I don't really, didn't want to put that in so soon. So I'm going to add it now. And then I have to really scrunch it in. So essentially, that's what I'm doing now, adding the salt. There's three teaspoons of salt. And I just scrunch it in. Gradually. And now I really get to work in it. Just basically, that's all you do. Now, unlike your notions of bread making where you get it out and you knead it forever, 10 minutes on the bench, um, I don't do that with sourdough. Basically, this is it. This is the first of four times when I'm handling the dough. So just getting that in. You can see it's starting already, so it's rested for 30 minutes. And that just allows all the glutens and the sugars to start being munched away by the microbes. So here it is. Now what I do, wet my hands, because I can want to keep it hydrated, but also wet hands keeps the dough from sticking to my hands. So you simply come close. You simply slide your hand into the back of the bowl, pick it up and fold it over. And you just do that four times essentially by turning the bowl. And that's all I do for my kneading. But I do this every 10 minutes, four times. Every 10 minutes, four times. I come back to it and do exactly this. So I'll see you on the fourth and final one of these in about 35 minutes, 40 minutes. We've come to the final, the fourth turning of the bread. So what I do is I just remove the lid, hands wet, helps the bread rehydrate, but also keeps the bread dough from sticking to my fingers. And all I do is pick up the side, turn it in on itself, 
turn it in on itself and just continue to turn and I hope you can see that it's much more pliant it's got a beautiful tension to the dough it's got also a silky sheen on it and it just feels ready to start rising so I just turn that a few times around for basically the ends in and I like to then at the end of that stage just pull the bread out and gently tease it out into a bit longer. And what that does is it extends the gluten strands that have already started to be activated. And I just put it in my hand and just gently pull it out. What you don't want to do is to tear those strands. So we want the strands to just continue to elongate, give them their pliability, their elasticity, because that's what's going to help the bread to grow. So I'm just going to fold that in, again make a little ball, place that into the bowl, cover it up, and it now is going to sit for probably four hours, more or less. If it's a really hot day, sometimes it's only two and a half, three hours when my bread's ready to go. So you want it to double in size, about four hours, the longer the fermentation, the more sour the dough sit for its bulk fermentation and then I'll see you at the other end of that when I shape the dough. So it's been four hours that the bulk fermentation has occurred during the day and as you can see here it has more than doubled in size so it's even got some air bubbles in it and gassy, any gases have been coming out of the, the dough. So now I'm going to turn the dough out, I'm going to lightly flour surface and then very gently pull the dough out. Now I don't want to you know punch it. I mean sometimes you'll see in other bread recipes they say punch the dough. No 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 you don't want to do that because what that's doing is literally pumping out all of the gases which is not what you want. You want to maintain the um the bulk the gases everything that's in the bulk. So here it is, very happy. Get my scraper out and just gently move it around. So again, I don't want very much of the flour in it, but it does need some flour at this stage. So notice I'm not pumping it, I'm not doing anything, but just gently giving it a little hello. If I was to make two loaves, this is when I would cut it because now I'm going to shape the loaf. This is the final stage before it goes into that oven. But I'm not, I'm gonna make just one loaf today. So what I do is I just gently take my hands under and gradually pull the dough out. I don't want to tear the dough. So just gradually pull it as evenly as I out, making kind of a rectangle as I go and getting rid of the kind of the, the bits that are more um, thicker than the other. So, about, about like that. I'm making a bit of a triangle. Then I fold the part next to me one third over and just pump it in. And then the other part comes over another one third. And I just gently push that in. This part goes over the other third. So it's basically I'm just folding, creates bubbles and also. Um, brings the elasticity into the glutens. And then I pull this and the same thing comes over and then I have this beautiful little pillow of bread. Doesn't that look beautiful? Now I could do it again, but it's really not that necessary to do that. So I'm now gonna put, this is gonna be the top of my bread. I'm gonna put that down into my basket. And if you come and have a look, you can see the bread. So this will now sit for another hour to two hours to, again, increase in its size about, it'll probably go up to about two thirds greater than the, the bulk that it is now. I'm going to cover it in, a, in another plastic bag. This one is a little bit more flexible. Turn it and put it aside and two hours later, we'll come back and you can see how it's risen before it goes into the oven. 
Okay, we're at the final stage. The bread is gonna go into the oven. So I've turned the oven on with the Dutch oven in there to 250 centigrade. So it's very hot in here because I want it to be as hot as possible. Off goes the lid. The bread literally just gets dumped in there. It will sort itself out. I'll just give it a bit of a shake to set it into its pack to work fairly quickly. And then my trusty razor, carefully, I'm gonna make four incisions, but you do whatever you like to make a bit of a square. Lid on, in the oven, turn down to 220 for 20 minutes with the lid on. After 20 minutes, the lid is off and it cooks for another 20 minutes. I'll see you at the end of that. Okay, it's the time for reckoning. I'm gonna take the bread out. It's been in for 40 minutes, 20 minutes with the lid on, 20 minutes with the lid off. And it comes out. And there it is. So I'm going to just tip it out so you can see. It should sound hollow, which it does, so it means it's cooked. And there is my loaf of sourdough bread. So I've made these cuts on it so you can see it spread. And that, what those cuts do is it allows the gases to escape out of the bread as it's cooking. Also, you can see that the bread is now risen as well. So it gives it, a, when you first put it into the oven, it has that next bit of kick as the gases are released to leaven the bread even further. So that's called oven spring. And this is the beautiful, lovely, loaf of sourdough bread which smells absolutely delicious as it would do because bread coming straight out of the oven there's nothing like it there's nothing like that smell of, of freshly baked bread and guess what we're having for dinner tonight slices of this beautiful bread in about 40 minutes have to let it cool with balsamic vinegar and olive oil and that is how you make sourdough